Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ashok. This video is the part of scenario based Salesforce interview questions and answers series in which I have already created two videos and covered many scenario based interview questions. And if you want to learn about them, then please check out those videos and you can find link in description. All right. So today in this video, we will see more scenario based interview questions, which are generally asked in most of Salesforce interviews. And we will cover questions related to Apex, Asynchronous Apex, Admin, Integrations and LWC. And I already have created LWC specific interview questions and answers series in which you will find multiple videos which covers from basic to advanced LWC interview questions. So if you want to learn only LWC related questions and answers, then you can refer those videos and you can find link in description. Okay. So let's start with today's first question. So the question is, suppose we have a validation rule on account object to make website field required and on same account object, we have a validation rule to make website field blank. Now we have two scenarios here. First we have what will happen if we try to insert record without website and another we have what will happen if we save it with website. Okay. So this question is related to order of execution and you know, we have lots of tools and ways to inject our custom logics and functionalities in Salesforce request pipeline like triggers, flows, workflows, process builders, approvals and many other tools are available in Salesforce. So using these tools, we can inject our custom logics in between Salesforce application pipeline. For example, you want to create task when opportunity get created, then you can use flows or trigger to create task record when opportunity record get created. Okay. So now the question is in which order all these tools will get execute like who will get execute first and who will get execute next right so salesforce already has a predefined order to execute all these automation tools that is called order of execution and as per this order of execution validation rules execute prior to workflow rules so in our first scenario where we are not providing website then validation rule condition will become true and request will be written from here only. So in first case, record will not get saved into database and error message will appear. Okay. Now, if we talk about second scenario where we are giving website, then validation rule condition will become false. So request will move further and reach to workflow rule. Now what this workflow rule will do, it will make that website feel blank. Okay. Now what will happen with our validation rule? Because you know, we have a validation rule to make sure website field should not be blank. But after executing validation rule, workflow rule making it blank. So as per order of execution, if we are making any field update from workflow rule, then only triggers and standard validation rules run again, not custom validation rules. So our record will get saved without website. I mean website field will be blank. Why this is happening? Because custom validation rules are already executed. And after that, workflow rule making website will blank. And as per order of execution, custom validation rules will not run again. So we can say this is a loophole in Salesforce pipeline. So in nutshell, custom validation rules will not run if you are making field update from workflow rules. Okay. And order of execution is very important topic in Salesforce. So if you want a separate detailed video on this, then do let me know in the comments. Now next question we have, can we show future method called out response on UI in LWC component? It means we have a future method and performing call out from that. Then is this possible to show call out response on LWC component? Then directly this is not possible because the return type of future method is void. And you know, future method is the part of asynchronous apex. And asynchronous apex will get executed in another thread. So we don't have any control in that and won't be able to return anything from there. But we can use platform events to get it done. Like from future method, we can publish a platform event. And in LWC component, we can subscribe that platform event with the help of EMP API module. So you can see here in this example, I have a future method and making call out from here. And at last, I am publishing platform event from here. 
and here in this LWC component in connected callback I have subscribed that platform event with the help of EMP API module and this response handler method will get executed whenever any platform event will get published. So you can put your logics here and we are passing this response handler over here with the subscription. Okay. So in nutshell, directly we can't achieve this, but with the help of platform events, we can show future method callout response in LWC component. Okay. Now next we have, let's say we have two objects, object A and object B and OWD is set to private for both objects. Now suppose user has permission on object A but don't have any permission on object B. Now if you are going to insert object B record from object A trigger then what will happen in this case? Okay. So this question just want to check your Salesforce security or sharing model knowledge and let's understand this question again. So as per this question we have two objects object A and object B and OWD or by default is set to private for both objects and current user has full permission on object A but don't have any permission on object B and you know user has a permission on object A so whenever he will try to save record then trigger will get called and try to insert record in object B and as we have seen user don't have any kind of permission on object B so now the question is what will happen here will this object be record insert or not okay so I think now you are clear that this is the case of permissions so in Salesforce generally we have two modes which can be applied on Apex while execution first is system mode and another one is user mode so system mode means run Apex code by ignoring user permissions like who is the logged in user and what all permissions he has that doesn't matter and if you are running Apex code in system mode then user permissions are bypassed there and it can access all objects fields and records by ignoring profile permission set and sharing rules okay and user mode means running Apex code will respect user permissions and can perform only permitted operations for example if user don't have permission to save record and if still you are trying to save then it will throw error so in that cell system mode bypass user permissions and user mode will follow user permissions okay and system mode is the default mode for apex code i mean wherever we write apex code like apex classes triggers and asynchronous apex then that will execute in system mode so when we are saving records from trigger then it will be saved without checking user permissions okay but Salesforce provided few ways to enforce user mode with Apex code. So there are multiple approaches which you can use to enforce user mode and whenever you are going to answer this question then please don't say about with sharing keyword because first of all we can't use with sharing keyword with triggers and with sharing only check record level permissions not object and fill level. For objects and fill level permissions you can use schema methods or oh, nowadays Salesforce introduced user mode database operations as well like instead of doing DML operations like this we should write DML operations in this form if you want to enforce user mode like here we need to add edge user or if you are using database methods then you can pass access level as a parameter okay and there are many other ways to apply user permissions with Apex code like with security enforced and security dot stripe inaccessible those I will discuss in separate video because this is a long topic. So in nutshell, our triggers run in system mode and if we are additionally not enforcing user mode, then it will insert record without permissions as well. So in this case, record for object B will be inserted from trigger. Okay. Now interviewer can also ask you, like let's say we are not using additional approach to enforce user mode then record will be inserted right now how user can access that record so if you are talking about the owner like who will be owner of that record then technically the user who initiated the request will be the owner and we have private OWD then it should show in the list of user but you know we don't have permission on object level 
so there is no way on ui to see that record so in nutshell user won't be able to access that record okay now next we have can you perform dml on multiple objects in single dml operation so let's understand this question a little bit more so let's say we have to insert data in five objects and you want to save your dml governor limits and you know in one dml operation we can insert up to 10000 records so the question is can i insert these five object records using single dml operation instead of five separate dml operations okay so now i think you got the question so let's discuss on answer so the answer is yes we can insert multiple objects records in single dml statement as well and you can see in this example we have to declare a generic as object list and in this generic as object list we can add our different different object records like here i am adding object a object b c d and e so i am adding five objects records here in this generic as object list and at last we can perform dml operation like this okay so this will perfectly work and you know all these objects are independent and there is no parent child relationship between these objects now the question is can we save related objects in single transaction because there we require parent record id in child record right so the answer is yes we can use external id as a foreign key to create parent and child record in single dml so this is the example you can see here i'm inserting opportunity in account in single dml so what i did here first i have created object or the opportunity then i have created object for account but only provided external id and added this account object in this opportunity dot account field now here i have created a separate object for account record and here also i am providing same external id okay and at last i am performing dml operation and providing both objects here like account and opportunity so with the help of this external id salesforce internally map these records okay so in that sale we can perform dml on multiple objects in single dml operation okay now next we have what is the difference between with sharing and apex managed sharing okay so first let's discuss about with sharing so with sharing is the keyword that we generally use with apex classes to enforce sharing rules for example let's say we are querying data from apex class using soql and by default apex runs into system context and if we define owd private for an object then in system context SQL will return all the data without caring of sharing rules and if we are using with sharing keyword with class definition like this then it will enforce sharing rule for particular class and all the queries written in that class will follow sharing rules and return only allowed records for the user okay and now if we talk about apex managed sharing then we can say this is the type of programmatic sharing which allows you to share a record from apex so generally we define baseline record sharing with owd org wide default like in owd we can define who can access and modify which records so generally we have three options for object public read write it means anyone can see and edit all the records and public read only means anyone can see all the records but only can edit their own records and private means user can only access or modify their own records okay so these settings we can do at object level in owd but let's say you want to share user records with their managers anyone who is in higher role hierarchy then you can use role hierarchy checkbox option and now let's say we have private owd on an object and if you want to share records with other users then we can use sharing rules and we can create sharing rules in two ways owner based or criteria based so whenever you want to share a particular user records with role or group then you can use owner based sharing and if you want to share records using with some conditions then you can use criteria based sharing for example 
you want to share all closed loss opportunities with another group, then you can use criteria based sharing. Okay. But let's say you have a complex condition that cannot be implemented in sharing rules. Now, if you want to share records, then you can use Apex sharing. And this is the example of Apex Manage sharing. So in Salesforce, each object has their additional sharing object. We don't have to additionally create it. It is built in feature in Salesforce. And this share object contains all the record sharing details. But if you want to share any object from Apex, then you have to insert new record into this. And you need to provide here which record you want to share with which user. Okay. So you can see here, I have job custom object. So share object is job underscore underscore share. Now here I am telling this record I want to share. And here I am giving the user ID to whom I want to share this record. And here we can define the access level. And at last, we can insert this record into Salesforce database. So this is how we can share a record with the help of Apex. So in Nutsail, with sharing and for sharing rule in Apex classes, and many sharing is used to programmatically share records. Okay. Now next we have, what will happen if Apex transaction rollback after NQQable job? So it means, let's say you are submitting a queuable job from Apex transaction, but somehow if current transaction get rolled back, then what will happen with that queuable job? Will that still execute or not? Because you know, queuable job is the part of asynchronous Apex and asynchronous Apex get executed in different thread. But if submitting transaction get rolled back, then Salesforce does not execute asynchronous jobs as well. Okay. So answer will be no job will not processed. Okay. Now next we have, assume we have a lead and owner of that lead is Q. Then after conversion, who will be the owner of opportunity account and contact? So this question is related to sales lead conversion process. So you know, a lead can be owned by multiple users with the help of Q. I mean, we can set a Q as a lead owner. So multiple users can work on the same lead. But when we convert lead into opportunity, then generally Salesforce create three objects, opportunity, account and contact. And by default, lead owner is the owner of these three objects. But we can't set Q as a owner of these objects. Then who will be the owner of these records? Okay. So the owner will get changed automatically to the user who is converting the lead. So we can say current user who is converting the lead will be the owner. Okay. Now next we have, can we set calling order of wire methods in LWC or in other words, can we call one wire method after another in LWC? So you know, we can have multiple wire methods in same LWC component and one wire method may be dependent on another. I mean, you may require one wire method response into another. So how we can handle this situation? Because you know, wire methods call automatically by framework. We don't have any control on that. So directly this is not possible, but what we can do, we can pass reactive parameters in dependent wire method and change that parameter value from first wire method. And reactive parameter means whenever the value of parameter will get changed, then wire method will call again. So let's understand this with example. So I have two wire methods here to get accounts and contacts. In first method, I'm getting accounts list and in second, I am getting account contacts list and passing account ID as parameter and here I am assigning account ID property with dollar sign. So this is how we can make a parameter reactive. We just need to add dollar with property name. Okay. Now in first method, when I get accounts, then I am assigning first account ID to this account ID property. And when this account ID property value will get changed, then this get contacts method will again call due to this reactive parameter. Okay. So directly there is no way to control calling order of wire methods, but we can set dependencies using reactive parameters. So whenever parameter value will get changed, then wire method will recall. Okay. So that's it for this video. And if you want more videos in this series, then do let me know in the comments. And if you learned anything new from this video, then please like and subscribe my YouTube channel. 
I will see you in next video.